Meet Jesus. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. He is Lord this morning. Hallelujah. My, my, my. If you have your Bible with you this morning, hallelujah, turn with me to the book of Revelations, I think is where we're going to wind up at. I want to talk to you just a minute about what we preached last Sunday. don't want to spend too much time on it, but we talked about commitment yes. last Sunday. And we talked about how that commitment is taking love a step farther. Amen? Right. How the commitment many times is born out of love and a lot of times love born out of commitment. Right. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. And this week I looked up the definition. I, don't, I may have gave it to you last week. The definition for the word commitment. And I'll read it to you because most of the church has no idea what it means. Amen? Come on. That's why, you know, sometimes we make it and sometimes we don't. Yeah. Amen? That's why sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Amen? Right. Sometimes you feel like a Christian. Sometimes you don't. And the times that you don't, you don't do nothing for God. Amen? Because you go on feeling instead of being committed. Amen? Yeah. And we likened that to when you get married. We talked about how that whenever you stand before the preacher, a lot of people make a decision to get married, but they don't make a commitment. Amen? Yeah. That's why the divorce rate is so high in America today and probably around the world as well. Amen? But it used to not be that way because commitment meant something. Mm -hmm. They didn't just make a decision. They made a commitment to each other for life. Amen? Oh. The vows of through, through uh, sickness and health and richer for poor, they meant something. Amen? Oh. And you felt committed to that person. You made a commitment. A vow meant something. Don't mean much anymore. Right. Amen? A vow meant something. I looked up the definition for commitment. And I could give you this, and we could go on home. I like to look up definitions in Webster's Dictionary. Amen? Amen. Right. Miriam Webster. Appreciate the Webster's Dictionary. Amen? Amen? Listen to this. Commitment means an act of committing to a charge. It means an agreement. It means a pledge to do something. It means an engagement to assume an obligation. It means something pledged. It means the state or an instance of being obligated or emotionally impelled to a cause or to someone. Do you hear that? Amen. A commitment this morning. God's looking for people that are committed to Him. Amen? Right that have made a commitment to serve Him, regardless of how they feel, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of how dark the day might get. Forget about the nights, amen? Sometimes the days ain't much brighter, amen? Right. Regardless of what the circumstance is, regardless of how I feel, Lord, I'm still going to serve you. Regardless of how sick I am, Lord, I'm still going to serve you. Regardless of the trial, regardless of how broke I am, I'm still going to serve you. God's looking for somebody to be committed to Him today. Amen. And I told you last week, committing ourselves to God, making a commitment to God is the only commitment really in life that we feel like we need to have some big spiritual awakening to be able to make. You commit yourself to your job whenever you tell, agree to them, yes, I'll work 40 hours a week. Yeah. I'll be here at 7 o'clock in the morning and I won't leave until 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, right. whatever the deal might be. Right. And you commit yourself to that job. Right. And you get yourself up every morning at daylight or whatever time you go into work. And you make sure you're there to punch the time clock. Right. You're committed to that job. Same. Amen. Amen. And you didn't hear no voice. Well, maybe you did. Money talks. Maybe that's what's talking to you. Amen. But you didn't hear no voice. You didn't see no bright light. But you made a decision and a choice that you were going to work there, that you were going to punch the time, that you were going to be on time, that you were going to give your best. Amen. You made a commitment. That's what God wants from His people. We got two. But see, everybody you ask, are you a Christian? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that can't be true. That can't be true. We'd be seeing more results than we are. But the sad truth of the matter is a lot of the church...
that love Jesus. Yeah. They love Him. They made a decision. They just think they made a commitment. Yeah. They've got a casual relationship with Him. God wants more that there is a bride, bridegroom relationship yeah. that we can have today. Whenever we decide, hey, I'm going to choose. I'm going to commit myself, my life, my strength, my energy. I'm going to put God first and I'm going to be in a committed relationship, not just some casual thing, but I'm going to have a committed relationship with God. Come on, preach. It means to obligate yourself. Amen? To decide, to choose. Well, I just don't... What's feeling got to do with it? Okay. Amen? Come on. Feelings won't last very long right. if that's what you're riding on in your relationship with the Lord. Feeling won't last very long if that's what your marriage is based on. Come on. If your marriage is based on lust instead of love, right. pretty soon the lust will be gone. Right. She won't look as good as she used to look. Right. She'll begin to be saggy and baggy and gray and old. Amen? Yeah. And you'll start looking somewhere else for things to satisfy your lust. Amen? Yeah. But when you're committed to somebody, when you've made more than just a decision to be with them, you have committed your love to them. It don't matter how old, how wrinkled, how in bad shape they get. You'll be there for them because you have made a decision not just to love them, but to be committed to them. To be faithful to them. You see, lust will leave you when you don't look so great. But love and commitment will sit by your bedside when you waste away to nothing as chemotherapy eats away at the very life of you and you lose your hair and you lose your looks and love will sit there and hold your hand till you pass over oh. to the other side. Oh, Amen. Great. God wants some people that will be committed to Him. Right. He's got too many. See, the Bible says a double-minded man yeah. is unstable in all of his ways. Amen. Yeah. One day you're saved and the next day you ain't. All because of the way you feel. Honey, you better decide today that I don't care what I feel like. I'm saved because I got my faith in Jesus. It don't matter how I feel. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I will forevermore live and commit myself to Him. Amen. I will live for Him. I will commit myself to Him. And that's what He's, he's looking for commitment. Have you ever heard somebody say, maybe in a relationship, they say, well, they just weren't willing to commit. I was looking for commitment. Not just some fly by. That's what God's looking for. God's looking for some people that will be committed to Him. God's looking for some people that will commit their selves, their energy, their body, their soul, and their spirit to living for Him. That's true. How many people know what a synonym is? A synonym are words that are the same as the word that you're basing your text on. Commitment, these are some words that mean the same thing or that at least are very, very close to meaning the same thing as commitment. Adhesion. It means to get stuck to. Yeah. Oh, we stuck to a lot of things. Come on. We're addicted to a lot of things. Right. We're glued to a lot of things. On, Some people man. glued to the tube. Right. Amen. We heard that before. Some people glued to the computer. Yeah. Some people glued to their job. Right. Some people glued to their, their their college or their schooling that they're going through. Right. God wants you to be stuck on Him. God wants us to find ourselves adhesive, yeah. adhesive to Him. Yeah. I didn't know how to put it, but that's good anyway. Go Get stuck on Him. Right. God wants some people to stuck on Him instead of stuck on the world. That's right, Amen. Brother. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. <laughs> begin to commit yourself to Him. And you'll begin to see a change in the way you think, yeah. in the way you walk, in the way you talk, yes, sir. in your relationship with Him. It means adhesion. I saw a woman in the store just a few days ago and it was sad. We were in line there and as is the case, there was a long line, only one register open. I believe the Lord does that to work on our patients. Amen. All right. And she was in a hurry and she was right behind me and I could hear her breathing. It sounded sort of like this. And I could hear her mumbling things like, is this the only line that's open? Yeah. I've got to get out of here. I'm on my way to the ER. I can't hardly breathe. So she finally, she complained and she breathed hard until she got up there. And I stayed around long enough as I was picking up my stuff to leave. She was buying cigarettes. Oh, oh. Lord Jesus. Couldn't hardly breathe. And on her way to the emergency room because she couldn't hardly breathe. But give me two packs of Marlboro. Addicted. Yeah. Addicted. You can talk about drug addicts all you want to, but tobacco is just as much a drug as anything that's on the market. Amen. Oh, if it wasn't, 
You can lay it down and walk away from it. But it has you hooked to it. It has to be some type of drug. It has to be something at least. It has to be something you can get addicted to. And it made me mad at the devil. Not at that poor woman. Because once it gets a hold of you, you don't want to let go. That's it, brother. Amen. She was addicted to it. And I was talking to some people in a local store here in the area. And I was telling them about it. and They said they see people with oxygen tanks. They'll roll their oxygen tanks into the store. Mm -hmm. Walk up to the counter and buy a pack of cigarettes. Right. And it's easy for us to stand back and judge or make fun or even belittle that. Yeah. But if it weren't for the grace of God. Right. Amen. Exactly right. If it weren't for the grace of God, we could be the same yes. way. Amen. Because those things in life, and I'm, and I'm not just picking on that, there's a lot of things. Come on. Amen. Come on. People get addicted to alcohol. People get addicted to a lot of things in this yeah. life. Come on. We get stuck to. We get stuck to things and we can't get loose. Yeah. I wish we could get stuck to God this morning and not be able to get loose. Amen? Amen. I believe that was wrong with Apostle Paul. Yeah. He, said, I, I, he said, I'm trying to apprehend that which has apprehended me. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm stuck on Him. I can't get He said, I've decided not to know anything among you hypocrites, but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He didn't call them hypocrites, but He talked pretty rough to them. Uh, <laughs> Amen? Come on. Get stuck on Jesus. Yeah. Get stuck on Jesus. Amen. There's all time. There's all time fighting over baptism and stuff like that. And you know what? And the church is too. Right. Amen. Come on. If you ain't baptized, you ain't going. If you ain't baptized this way, you ain't going. If you ain't bad you know what Paul said? I thank God I didn't baptize none of you. That's exactly why I feel like telling some people that myself. Amen. All right. They say, How do you baptize? I don't. That's why I ain't told them that. But that's, what I, that's what I feel like telling them sometimes. Amen. Because yeah. they don't know how many times you've been married. Mm. They don't know if you go hard around. Mm. They don't know anything about your relationship with God except how you baptize. Yeah. Kiss my foot. Mm. Amen. Paul said, I'm glad I ain't baptized none of you. Yeah. <laughs> why? Because they were arguing about it. Yeah. They were fighting about it. Don't get me wrong. I believe in baptism this morning. I baptize in Jesus' name. If you come to me, that's the only way you can go down. All right. Amen. But I ain't going to fight with you about it. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Because I'm hooked on Jesus, not on baptism. All right. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ wants some people that have been committed to Him. That's right. Amen. That will stick to Him like glue. Right. That will be committed yeah. to Him. Come Amen. On. You know what else that... Some of the synonyms were, it means to pledge your allegiance to. Yeah. It means to be attached. It means fidelity. Right. Did you hear that? It means constancy. It means dedication. It means devotedness. It means devotion. It means faith. It means faithfulness. It means fastness. It means loyalty. Right. It means steadfastness. God's looking for some people that will be steadfast today in their faith. Right. Amen. Come on. From time to time, I'll run across someone that knew me 15 years ago, maybe or more, and they'll say, are you still preaching? And I'm like, do I have any other choice? I'm stuck on Him. I've been apprehended by Him. I'm a bond servant to Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to, oh, hallelujah. Lord willing, and He is. Amen. My, my, my. I plan on preaching until I die. I don't have no retirement date set. Amen. My goodness. We need to get addicted to Him. Right. And you know what? Some, uh, some related words it said there in the, in the Webster Dictionary, it meant affection and fondness and determination and resolution and dependability and reliability and trustability. Isn't that great? Right. All of that from the word commitment. Now let's look on the other side of it. Some opposite things to the word commitment. It means disloyalty. Disloyalty is the opposite. Of commitment. Faithlessness is the opposite of commitment. Falseness is the opposite of commitment. Falsity is the opposite of commitment. Inconstancy, meaning you can't be dependent upon. That is the opposite of commitment. Infidelity is the opposite of commitment. Trustability, untrustability is the opposite. Amen? Treachery unfaithfulness. And we talked about this last week how that God many times 
compares his relationship with us to a man and woman that are married, their relationship. And we talked about how that if you are not committed to your wife, she ain't going to like that. And if you are not committed, husband, a wife to your husband, she, she, you ain't going to like that, she ain't going to like that. Both of you have to be committed. Amen? All right. And when you commit to one another, and you say till death do us part, that's what kind of relationship God wants with us. I don't believe in once in grace, always in grace, but I believe you can be saved, once saved, always saved. All right. Amen? Yes. Of course, it depends upon your choices that you make. Yes. It depends upon your faith. Amen. But you can certainly get saved and stay saved. Right. Amen? True. Did you hear what I said? I know we got these. We got two different groups of people. Some people believe you saved one day and lost the next, and other people believe you saved once and you can't never lose it. Yeah. You can be saved once and never lose it. Come on. Amen. That's right. You can be born again right. and forevermore right. be the child of God, born again on your way to heaven. Right. But that is dependent upon your faith in Jesus Christ and what He did at the cross and your relationship with Him. Amen. Because He ain't gonna lock the doors and keep you in. That's right, brother. You can walk away from him anytime. Come on. He's looking for somebody that'll be committed. That's right. He's looking for somebody that'll make a commitment. Come on. And who we talked about last week? We talked about Jacob yeah. and Leah and Rachel. Amen. Come on. We talked about how that Jacob worked seven years for Laban because he thought he was going to get Rachel mm. and he got Leah. Yeah. And instead of giving up, why? Because of his love. Mm. Because of his commitment to that love. Laban said, if you work seven more, I'll give you the one you wanted in the first place. And you know what he did? He did it. Yeah. Why? Because he was committed. That's what God's looking for. Some Christians that'll be committed to Him. That'll be addicted to Him. That'll be attached to yeah. Him. Amen. Wow. You ever heard somebody talk about it? This, this mama say to this kid, I can't keep him off my skirt tails. Yeah. They always want, always climbing on me. Always wanting on my lap. Yeah. God could use some of that from us. Amen? Amen. My goodness, sometimes he, has to, sometimes he has to knock the breath out of us to get our attention. That's right. Amen? Because we don't slow down long enough to right. acknowledge Him, right. to talk to Him, right. to have that relationship with Him that He wants. Right. So sometimes we get, sometimes He got to trip us, maybe. Right. Sometimes we got to get the breath knocked out of us. Maybe He don't do it, but He allows things to do it. Right. And then we're like, oh God! But we should have been doing that in the first place. Amen. God's looking for somebody that will talk to Him. Not just when they need something. That's but right. just to say, Lord, I love You. Come on. Thank You for being there. I love You. I appreciate You. Thank You for being my Lord. Thank You for being my Savior. He's looking for somebody to be committed to Him. Right. How many wives out there like it whenever your husband, for no reason at all, gives you something or tells you they love you? If the only time your husband ever told you that he loved you is when you brought him a grilled cheese, you'd begin to think of something a little funny about that. Amen? I heard one joke. They said this man and a woman had been married all these years and the woman said, Honey, you ain't told me you love me for years. He said, I told you I loved you when we got married and if I changed my mind, I'd let you know. Amen? But wives like to hear their husbands say, Honey, I love you. Yeah. Amen? Husbands like to hear their wives say, Honey, I love you. Right. Not just when they want something, but that's how we treat God. That's how we treat God. We treat God like a vending machine. Yeah. And prayer is our quarter. Yeah. Amen? Come on. Oh my goodness. Y'all loving this, I'm telling you. <laughs> we treat God like a vending machine. When we need something, we run to Him. Yeah. Oh Lord, help us. And I ain't hitting this at nobody Amen. in particular. All of us have been guilty of it one time or another. Amen? Right. All of us have been guilty of it one time. Ain't, ain't no one of us. I don't care how high up you think you are on the spiritual pole. That's it. And if you think you are high up on the spiritual point, then we already detected a problem there. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But no matter who you are, right. no matter where you are, every one of us can stand some more prayer time. Right. Every one of us can stand some more alone time with God. Amen? Right. Every one of us can stand some, some more time with His Word. Amen? And getting into His Word and feeding upon the Word of God. That's right. Amen. There was a church in the book of Revelation, the second chapter. And this church was the church of Ephesus. And John would write to these people what Jesus told him to write to them. And Jesus would say to this church in Revelation, the second chapter and the second verse, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles 
and they're not. And has found them liars. And has borne and has patience. And for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Now see, these people had some good points. They had some good things. And that's the great, one of the great things about Jesus. He'll pat you on the back before He whips you on the honey. Right. Amen? On. Read what He did to these churches over here. He would tell them what they were doing right. And He said, but nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. You ain't, do, you ain't lining up in all the parts here. Amen? Mm -hmm. Listen to what He says to this church. Let's find out what their problem was. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love. What greater picture of non-committing can you get than that right there? Right. These people had some good points. They were doing some good things, but they weren't committed. Amen. They didn't have commitment. They might have at one time, but somewhere along the line, listen, maybe ministry got in the way. Did you know ministry can get in your way with your relationship with the Lord? Right. Say, Brother Billy, that don't make no sense. It does if you've been in ministry for 26 years. I know what I'm talking about. You can get so caught up in the ministry that you find yourself not having time that you need to spend alone with God. That's right. Amen? You can work seven days a week, 18 hours a day, and find yourself with not enough time to do it, to spend time with God because you're too busy doing the work. That's right. So I don't know what caused these people to depart from their first love, but they did. Amen. He said, you've left your first love. Mm -hmm. I believe they had a lack of commitment. I believe that somewhere down the road they compromised. Amen? Oh. Maybe they did all these things before they backslid and now they wasn't doing none of them. Amen? Oh. But they had left their, they had, they had, they had lost their commitment to their obligation to God. Oh. Not to church. Oh. Not to ministry maybe. Not even to the work, but to God. Right. They had lost that relationship, that first love right. relationship. And you might think, well, I'm just skirt on by. It ain't going to hurt anything. I don't spend time with God like I ought to. I don't have Him in the place it should be, but I'm still going to church. I'm still paying my tithe. I'm still feeding the hungry. I'm still visiting the sick. Let's see what Jesus said was going to happen to these people unless they got themselves back to their first love that they had left. He said, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. You face it to lose everything you got unless you get your love relationship right with me. Amen. Amen. I don't care how much. You, listen, nobody done any more for humanity probably than. My goodness, I had it, and it, Mother Teresa. Probably nobody done more for humanity than her, and maybe they are. But she just always comes to mind. Such a precious lady. Amen. Feeding the sick and taking care of the little ones and doing all of the things that she did. The Bible says that you can do all of that and if you don't have charity, it profits you nothing. And the charity it's talking about is love. Amen? Right. And he ain't, necessarily, he ain't even just talking about your love for mankind. He's talking about your love relationship with Him. And I got news for you. Regardless of how you think this morning, there ain't but one way to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's through the blood. There's not but one way to heaven and that's through Jesus. You can't get there through Mary. You can't get there through, the, through all the saints that you pray to. Only through Jesus. So you can do all of those works like these people were doing and still not have your first love where it was supposed to be. Or maybe they did those things and then they lost their first love. All I know is, is they had walked away. They had, they had neglected their responsibility and obligation to He who had sent them and now they find themselves almost about to miss out. He says if you don't repent, if you don't straighten up, your candlestick is going to be removed out of its place. This choice is up to you. You can choose to keep walking down the path you're walking on or you can decide to stop and find where you missed it and go back and start over again and say, God, I'm sorry. Somehow I've let things come into my life that now that somehow you ain't first no more. Now my job is first or, my, or even my family I know I've got some feedback on that before. I asked some people one time when I was preaching, I said, if you had to choose between God and your family, who would you choose? And that other lady in the back said, I choose my family. Well, you can do that if you want to. You can live as you please. We can live as we please. But we will pay the cost. Amen. God will not play second fiddle to no man, no woman, and no child, and no other God. Amen. He is a jealous God, and He will be served, and you will follow Him, or sooner or later, you will pay the cost thereof. Right. Amen. 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 Amen.
And these people had compromised somewhere down the line. That's right. And the church ought to know what compromise is about. Amen. Amen. That's right. She knows more about compromise than she's ever known about commitment. Oh, Amen. Amen. She may not think it's compromise, Thank but it is. Come on. Amen. The word compromise means to reason with someone right. and come to a middle ground right. and an agreement. Amen. Right. The church has made an agreement with the devil. Right. The church has made an agreement with hell. Oh, the church has decided to rub elbows oh, with the ecumenical spirit that has taken over the big churches of America and they join hands with the Muslims and they join hands with all the other religions and say we can all serve the same way. You serve your way, I serve mine, we'll all get to heaven. Honey, I got news for you. There is no ground to compromise when it comes to Jesus Christ being the only way to get to God. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There is no compromising there. He said, I do you will not get to the Father unless you come through me. Come on. There's on. no compromise in that. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, granted, there are some things that we might be able to, so we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this right. and go on. But the blood of Jesus ain't one of them. That's right. Salvation ain't one of them. Come on. You can't lock arms with the Muslims and the Hindus right. and say we're all going to the same place because we ain't. I know that ain't popular. Brother David was talking about Chrislam mm. that they're coming out with. Yeah. And Rick Warren and the boys yeah. hugging up to the Muslims. Right. I got news for you. Allah is not God. Right. Muhammad is not the Savior. There ain't but one way to get to heaven and that's through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. I know that'll preach here. It won't preach in a lot of places, but it'll preach in voice of the Lord Tabernacle. I done checked with the pastor and he said it's alright. Amen. You ain't going to get to God unless you go through the Son. You ain't going to see the Father unless you go through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. You can't lock arms with every doctrine that comes along and say, well, I don't agree with you, but that's just the way I believe. You go ahead and believe the way you do. No, the way you believe, if it don't have Jesus in the center of it, you're going to split hell wide open. You cannot make it. Climbing into your little screen wire box on Saturday night or Sunday morning or whatever you do it and say, Father, forgive me for I've sinned. There ain't but one Father that can forgive you for you sin. Amen. There ain't but one way to get to the Father, and that's not through your priest. That's not through your beads. That's not through your laying down on the floor and kissing your rug toward Mecca. Amen. You ain't going to get there unless you say, Jesus Christ, I'm a sinner. I put my faith in you as the Lamb of God. I believe in you as being the only way to heaven. Say, Brother Billy, that's narrow minded. It might be, honey, but it is a narrow way this morning. Amen. You ain't going to get there unless you go through Jesus. Right. There ain't no compromise in there. There ain't no middle ground to be found there. Amen. And if you feel like this morning that you can compromise on that, you are in trouble. Yes, sir. You are in trouble. Yes. When big name preachers are asked on television, hey, what about the Jews? What about the Muslims? Well, I can't say. Sure you can. Come on. I can say this morning about the Ventresses yeah. and the Heads right. and the Douglases. Yeah. And the St. Clairs. Yeah. And the Willises. Yeah. And the Howes. Yeah. They ain't but one way. I don't care if you're Pentecostal. I don't care if you're three-way, one-way, two-way, four-square, three-square, no-square. I don't care who you are. You don't get there except through Jesus. Come on, Amen. That's right. You don't get there except through Jesus. No other name. Given. No other name. No other name given. It wasn't Muhammad. Amen. Yeah. Matter of fact, Muhammad was a sick pervert. And all you have to do is read your own history to find that out. All right. Amen. Come on, preach. Oh, that ain't popular. That'll keep our pews empty probably this morning, but that'll get you to heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't mean to preach so hard this morning. Praise the Lord. But I couldn't get to commitment without at least stopping and talking about compromise. All right. Because that's what happens to most of the church's commitment today. Oh, that's good. They've compromised. That's good, preach. They've compromised their teaching. They've compromised their doctrine. Why? So they can have their pews filled. So they can have a place in the fellowship of the world. Right. Amen. I want to be popular. Amen. I want people to like me. Come on. But not at the cost of their soul. Right. Amen. Come on. I'd rather you hate me and come to the realization of the truth that you ain't going to get to heaven except through Jesus than to love me and slide right on into hell. Come on. 
Amen. There ain't but one way to get there, and that's Jesus. Yes. He's looking for some people that will be committed to Him. Right. And compromise will steal your commitment. Come on. Compromise has had caused these people to leave their first love. Yeah. They left their first love. You remember the condition that Israel was in whenever we last week when we talked about Hosea and <coughs> Leah. Yeah. The week that we talked about <coughs> last week was Jacob and Leah. <coughs> Hosea and Gomer a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the situation that was going on with Israel? Yes. Yeah. Compromise. Come on. Compromise had caused that. Right. Most of the time when a preacher tells you he's learned better, that means he's compromised. Right. Amen. I know people today that say, well, I'm still on my journey. And I know we all still learn things, but when it causes you to walk away from Jesus and the principles that He's founded upon oh. His Word, you've compromised. Yes. Amen. You've compromised. I got hurt about it. That's true. This church had lost it, and Jesus said, if you don't repent, mm -hmm. if you don't get back to being committed to Me, right. see, He didn't say that you've left your works, right. you've left your ministry, You've left these things. He said, you've left me. Right. Your first love. first love. You've left me. Come You're on. no longer committed to me. Yeah. You're no longer in that intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. You've been unfaithful to me. Come on. And nobody knew much better, much more about commitment than Paul did. All right. We learn about Paul, and I'm going to hit this and close this morning. Paul was the enemy of the church, and when he was, he was committed to the cause yeah. of killing every Christian he could get his hands on. Come on. When he was born again on the road to Damascus, he became committed to Jesus like that. Yeah. Amen? Come on. He would stand before the rulers of his day and say, listen, I can answer your questions. Yeah. I've been where you're at, but I know better now. Right. On the road to Damascus, Jesus saved him. Right. And he became committed to Jesus. That's right. He said he was a servant. Amen? Mm -hmm. To Jesus Christ. Come on. Listen to what he teaches. Romans, the 12th chapter. In the first and second verse. You can go there if you want to. If you don't want to, that's alright. Just write it down. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, yeah. by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living yeah. sacrifice, holy, yeah. acceptable yeah. unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Did you hear that? He said, present yourself to be a sacrifice. Yes. You see, there is no such thing as a partial sacrifice. That's right. There is no such thing as being half committed. Right. You're either committed or you ain't. Yeah. Amen. And Paul was saying, commit yourselves. Yeah. Give yourself holy. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. There's a story that I read about a pig and a chicken. Mm -hmm. I'm always using some deep theology on y'all. Right. And they were walking down the road together. And as they walked along, they read a sign advertising a breakfast to benefit the poor. Mm -hmm. And the chicken, he looks over to the pig and he says, you and I should donate. Yeah. I'll give an egg for breakfast. And you give a ham. Come on. The pig replied, not so fast. <laughs> For you, it would just be a contribution. Yeah. For me, that's a total commitment. That's right. Oh, we don't care to give God an egg. Yeah. We don't care to give God a piece. Come on. Let's don't give him the whole thing. Come on. Let's don't give him the whole thing. Amen. There's no such thing as being half committed. You either committed or you ain't. There's no such thing as being just half of a sacrifice. You either you either submit yourself to be a sacrifice or you don't. Right. Amen. Amen. Exactly right. Lukewarm makes him sick. Right. I'm going to close with this scripture this morning. I ain't even got on all my notes. 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter. 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quiet, quiet ye like men. Be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. Oh, is that love we're talking about? Amen. I beseech you, brethren. Then he says, you know the house of Stephanus? He's using him as an example. Yeah. I wonder if he's ever used our house as an example. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's ever talked to somebody and said, <clears throat> you know the house of Tyler Willis? Mm -hmm. And then said, their faithfulness, their greatness, their spirituality. You know, something along those lines. Yeah. I wish you'd be like them. All right. I don't know too many people that he could probably use as an example for that today. Come on. You know the house of Stephanus? 
that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Yeah. Did you hear that? They had committed themselves. Right. Amen? True. And he says that you submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. Come on. Paul's talking about being committed today. Right. Praise the Lord. God and the things that He has done and the things yeah. that He does personifies commitment. He has committed Himself to you today. Come on. That's not the question. Come on. The question is, have we committed ourselves to Him? The question is, are we fair weather Christians? Come on. Do we allow every wind of doctrine to knock us down and to Come keep on. us from serving God? Play it. Or do we continue to say, Lord, I believe in You. Yeah. I trust in Your Word. I'm here today because of You. Amen. I have my faith in You. Right. I'm committed to You. Oh my goodness, every Praise one of us need Lord. more of that. Every one of us need more of that. All right. Amen. Come on. Jesus yeah. was committed to get into the cross. That's right. He was determined. He had made a decision. Listen, things happened along the way yeah. that would have caused us to give up. But Jesus said, for this cause came I into the world. Yeah. For this hour. That's why He was born. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. He had to climb Mount Calvary's hill yes. and lay His life down on an old rugged cross. And He knew that. He was committed to that. Amen. He was determined. Even when the disciples said, Not so, Lord. Be it far from you. He would turn and say, Get behind me, Satan. Why? Because he knew it wasn't the disciple. It was the force that had been trying to stop him from the moment this was spoken in the Garden of Eden. The efforts that took place to try and stop the seed that would come down. The efforts that had been tried to stop him by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those that would have laid hands on him and killed him. He knew the enemy did not want him to make it to the cross, but he was committed. He was dedicated to his purpose. Amen. To the Father's will. Oh, I wish yes, we could sir. get that this morning. He was committed. Come on. He was committed Come on. to do the Father's will. Amen. Come on. Even when he fell in the garden yeah. under the weight of the sin of the world yeah. and bled through the very pores of his skin, right. he was still committed, Amen. dedicated. Right. to making it to the cross and to laying down His life. Laying down His life for mankind. Amen. He was committed to you. He's still committed to you. Yes, That's sir. not the question. You're still the apple of His eye. Right. You're still His child. You're still His love today. That ain't the question. The question is, are you committed to Him? And we can give Him lip service all day long and say, yes, yes. Yes, I am. But our actions many times speaks louder than our words. Amen? We say we're committed, but where are we? Whenever He calls. Amen? We say we are dedicated, but where are we? Whenever there's something to be done. We say we're dedicated and committed, but where is our relationship with Him today? How much time do we spend with Him? Amen. I can tell my wife, I love you. I'm committed to you. I'm dedicated to you. And then not show her any of it. Do you think she's going to believe that for very long? Nope. Yeah. Amen. On, God wants to see some commitment right. out of His people. Amen. He wants to see dedication out of His people. Right. And i got lots more Scriptures, but I ain't going to give them to you. Running out of time. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God wants us to be committed. Yes. Amen. And I know that every message He gives me starts with me first. Amen. I need to be more committed. I need to be more dedicated. Oh. Not to the work, not to the church, to Him. See, I've heard people say, church is my life. you got a problem. All right. Jesus should be your life. Yeah. Of course you're going to go to church when Jesus is the center of your universe. Amen. Yeah. But that shouldn't be your life because church will let you down. Amen. The preacher will let you down. Amen. But Jesus won't. Amen. Commit Amen. yourself to Him today and see yourself begin to grow. Someone else this morning have something before